Good morning, everybody. It's my pleasure to make a presentation about project management training courses. In this course, the trainees will handle practical managerial issues they exposed in their career life. In addition to that, the course cover project organization types, time management, project planning and scheduling, cost estimation and budgeting, uh, finally, project resource estimation and allocation. At the end of this course, the trainees will understand the principle of management and its functions. In addition to that, be able to use this principle in practice. In this courses, the material were divided into six parts. These parts are first introduction, planning and scheduling, resource planning, leveling and constraint, cost estimation and cash flow analysis, project control, schedule monitoring, earned value analysis, and at the end of this course, computer application and project management using Primavera will be delivered to the trainees. Let me now talk about the content of each part <coughs> of the material and start with introduction. In the introduction, we will define a project and the project resources. Project can be defined as temporary endeavor undertaken to create permanent facility and any project consume resources. These resources are called four M's and these four M's are material, manpower, machines and money. After that, we will define project management and why a project management is considered art and science, not art only and not science only. Uh, also, in introduction, we will talk about the skills required for project management. In order to become a project manager, you need to have communication skills with other uh, parties. You need to make uh, good creativity skills and you need to uh, what is called, uh, you need to have a uh, good idea in uh, or experience in the site, how we can make a project management, how we can coordinate with different parties in order to become good the project manager. Also, we will talk about the project management di dimensions and these dimensions called project constraints. These constraints include time, cost, quality, and safety because each owner required to complete, or stakeholders required to complete his project within time, within budget, and at desired equality. Uh, management functions will be discussed in this introduction. Uh, management functions include the planning phase, organizing, how we can organize the projects, leading, not all manager is leader, and all leader is manager. Finally, controlling, controlling include monitoring and updating projects. Finally, in the introduction, we will present life cycle of the projects. Each life cycle consists mainly of five phases. These five phases start with the planning phase, then design phase, after that the procurement phase, execution phase, and finally, use of the project or use of facility. The second part of this material, will be, we will talk about the project planning and the scheduling and what is the difference between the planning and the scheduling. The planning will answer many questions, why, who, whom, when, and so on. Whereas the scheduling, we can answer only one question, which is when. After that, we will present the steps for scheduling the projects. The first step for scheduling the projects, determine activity. Uh, list, uh, uh, then uh, identify relationship between activities and determine activity duration. Activity duration can be obtained through dividing a quantity of any item by a productivity to get the duration either by an hour or by days. Usually, activity duration given as days. After that, scheduling techniques using either part chart or CBM, especially a precedence diagramming method, which is more common today, and most of the software deal with the precedence diagram, will be considered and how we can draw this network and make calculations in this network. Network calculations include many, many values that need to be determined. These values are early start. Early start means earliest time an activity can start. 
early finish, earliest time and activity can finish, latest start, uh, latest time and activity can start without delaying the project, late finish, latest time and activity can finish without delaying the projects and we need to determine the float times, the float times, amount of time you can delay an, any activity in the projects without delaying the projects or without delaying succeeding activities. Finally, type of constraints should be considered when, when making the scheduling because these of all constraints can lead to extend a duration of the projects. For example, one of these constraints, financial constraints, if we make two activities at the same time and we don't have uh, enough money to, uh, to perform these two activities simultaneously, then we need to postpone one of these activities in order to make all activity within budget available. <coughs> then we talk about resource management. In the resource management, we talk or we display resource allocation, how we can allocate different resources for each activity. And these different resources include, as, as said before, labor, material, equipment, and money. And how we can draw what is called resource histogram or resource profile. Resource histogram show the relationship between resource demand over time or over unit of time. Either unit of time can be day, month, hour, depends on the size of a project. Uh, usually from resource profile you can see how there is a fluctuation between resources. Sometimes there is peak, sometimes there is valley. How we can make all of the resources per day is the same. Uh, and this is called resource leveling. Resource leveling, we consider that available resources are adequate. If you need 10, 10 labors, it is available. If you need 100 of labors, it is available. In resource leveling, we, after drawing network and after drawing bar chart, what we do is shifting non-critical activities. When shifting non-critical activities, uh, the duration of a project become as it is. There is no change in the duration of the projects. But what is the change, the early start of some, some non-critical activity in the network? Finally, in resource management, we do scheduling with limited resources is similar to resource leveling, but in this part, we, we may shift both critical activities and non-critical activities, and the duration of the project may be extended. In cost estimation part and the cash flow analysis, we will present cost estimation technique. There are three techniques that we considered. One of these techniques is called parametric modeling, other technique called uh, bottom-up estimating, and third technique, uh, which is called the uh, analogous method for estimation. Then we will talk about estimating the project cost. Any project cost consists of two uh, costs. One of these costs is called direct cost, and indirect cost. The direct cost include labor, material, equipment, Indirect cost for any project include overhead and profit. The overhead can be divided into two types. First type, job overhead. Second type is operating overhead. A job overhead can be attributed to any expenses that is spent or that expend on the site, whereas operating overhead can be attributed to any expenses that is expend on the head office location like electricity, uh, rent, uh, rent of the office, and so on. At the end of cost estimation, we will talk about money and network schedule, how we can make combination between money and time, and show at every day what is the amount of money that will be paid for, uh, the, uh, for the contractor, or what is the amount of money that be will be spent from the owner. In this part, we, we will draw to a two uh, curve, one of these curves is called cash in, and other curve is called cash out. In other words, cash out called a curve, cash in is called stair curve. Uh, this curve, or uh, these two curve, is very important for uh, stakeholders because they show their status. It is if it is in the negative cash flow, 
or if it is in the positive cash flow. The final topic that we will talk in this uh, course is project monitoring and controlling. What is the difference between monitor and updating? Monitoring is collecting data from the site, from the project itself. Updating, after compa make comparison between what has happened on the site and what is scheduled before, we can make corrective actions, and this corrective actions is called updating. To do that, we need to apply what is called end value analysis or end value management. This method <coughs> assists us in determining the status of a project. Are we within time or are we, and are we within cost? For example, uh, if the project is uh, over budget or under budget, you need to take corrective actions in order to go and to continue project as planned before. To perform this analysis method, we need to determine three values, and these three values are budgeted cost of work schedule or planned value, budgeted cost of work performed or earned value, actual cost of work performed or actual cost. After calculating these three values, we need to determine two other important val values. One of these values is called SV or schedule variance. Schedule variance is the difference between budgeted cost of work schedule and budgeted cost of work performed. What we'll do, budgeted cost is fixed, and we compare work schedule with work performed. If the work performed is greater than work schedule, the value will be positive, and which means that the project is ahead of the schedule. Whereas if the value is negative, work performed is less than work schedule, we are behind schedule. And if the value is zero, we are on time or on schedule. The same for other value which is called CV or cost variance. Cost variance <coughs> is the difference between budget cost of work performed and actual cost of work performed. What we will do is fix fixed work performed and compare budget cost with actual cost. If the budget cost is greater than actual cost, the value is positive and we are under budget. Other than that, if the budget cost is less than actual cost, the project is over budget. And if the value of CV is zero, the project is on time. Uh, the material will be delivered through using presentation material and interactive learning through exercises, real practice, group circles, and public participation. Project manager outside or, or senior project manager will be invited to, to make a presentation and discuss with the trainees real world practice. Finally, the course will be delivered in 16 training hours. Thank you for your attentions, and I'm very glad to answer your questions. And to hear.